Good morning, church. Uh, we are very thankful to all of you who have chosen this morning to uh, visit with us and worship with us this morning. Uh, as you well know, uh, Pastor Mark has been leading us uh, for about two months in the book of Daniel, and uh, he will continue that uh, in a week or so. Uh, I think the message today is uh, one that... Uh, we all recognize that our nation and many nations throughout the world are broken. Uh, there's a pandemic going on. There has been rallies, protests, mob violence. Uh, these are difficult times for each and every one of us. Many norms have been broken. Uh, our country is severely divided. Uh, the last two elections, uh, you can see that. It was... Uh, uh, very, very apparent that uh, there are two opinions about how to manage things and manage this country, and they don't have seem to have the realization that what they have to do is they have to come together and they have to compromise and they have to look for the better. Uh, we have a broken economy and we have a pandemic that uh, at the moment uh, sees no end. Just one uh, we thought we're, we have vaccinations, but uh, those are kind of slow in coming out. I think the pandemic also has uh, just over the last uh, year or so has just worn people down. Uh, an armed mob laid siege to the capital of Washington, D.C. The rule of law was broken. Uh, what do you think? Our enemies were laughing. We are a country that desperately needs national healing. Our economy. Uh, many people have been displaced, out of work. Uh, many businesses have, uh, small businesses, many larger businesses have closed. Our government uh, needs healing. Our educational system certainly needs healing. Uh, you know, if you can see, uh, not even an opinion can be reached as to whether or not we ought to be having school or we not should not be having school. It's just a question. Uh, this situation, our, our families need healing. Uh, the stress that uh, this last year has put upon people has been uh, hard on families and on relationships. So this raises the question, and um, I think I'm speaking generally, most specifically, to Christians, how does God heal a broken nation? Let us look to David who cries out to God in desperate times. I'd like to read with, with you uh, Psalm 22, 5. Uh, it should be up. You have shaken the land and you have torn it open. Mend the fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. Can you imagine that? King David writing in the Psalms, what things must have been like then. But for those who fear you, you, meaning God, have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand. Those that you love may be delivered. It was very clear that David was seeking God's help in the desperate situations that they found themselves in. One of the things I believe is when you see the word but you and its meaning is God, it means we're going to get a, a good dose of hope. There are numerous examples in the Old Testament on how God has healed hurts, brokenness, conflicts, and broken nations. 
As you read the Bible, there is a clear pattern and a specific promise that God gives to us in any nation that we live in. It is given to the people of God, Christian believers. It was given 3,000 years ago when God made a promise to Solomon on the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem. As I've said, it's not a promise to any nation specifically, but it is a promise to God's people. It is a specific path for the healing of a nation. It is found in 2 Chronicles 7.14, and we are going to look at the word specifically. There is a path, and then there is a promise in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, if my people who are called by my name, Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. National healing only happens if God's people lead by example. That's us. We have got to be the ones that non-Christians and people that are not believers yet look to and see that there's something different about what the way we live and the things that we do. Uh, in James 4, 6, um, we look at the fact that we, one of the first things was that we must humbly confess our sins. In James 4, 6, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. As you recognize today in this country, pride is a big problem. Pride and arrogance is a tremendous problem because what happens is society has led people to believe that you need to go out there and get what you can get and you need to make more money and become more important in life. And if you have to step on people in the process, then you just go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter. So pride's a real problem. God doesn't like that. I know that um, as we go through this, these, uh, this reading of these verses may seem tedious, but I want you to listen to them. It's not my opinions that you're listening to. You're listening to the God that created the universe and his words that were given to Solomon in Second Chronicles. If you claim that you're not sinning, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, doesn't that seem to be a problem? We, uh, in, in a lot of cases, what we'd like to do is uh, sort of hide or overlook our own sins, but point out the sins of other people. That's called, that, that I believe is called self-deception. Um, maybe, uh, I know there's been other ways to say this, but I think one of the ways that, that you can look at this is love the sinner and hate my sin, the sin that's in me. We, we spend, uh, how much time do you think uh, uh, that we spend uh, each day scrolling through our, our phone, looking at Facebook. How, mu how much time do you think do you see people criticizing and bringing to the forefront something that a mistake that some other person has made and at the same time not realizing that you are, you are also a sinner too? If we look at uh, 1 Peter 4.17, for it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. Judgment must start with the family of God. We have to understand that we as Christians are being looked at and judged by our Heavenly Father. And we have to understand that and try to make changes in our life so that those that we reflect to other people 
something different. Um, Proverbs 28, 13, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them find mercy. Uh, concealing your sins never works because it may work uh, to your friends or to your family or to people in general, but yet whatever those sins that are remaining in you that are unconfessed, God still knows about them and he expects that you should confess those. We'll now look at James 5.16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Um, once again, I think uh, one of the things that we've uh, we've often talked about is you a, a Christian needs to have other believers that are close to him or her, and that you can actually share your heart and you can share with them the problems that you're having and the mistakes that you're making. That's a very important thing is to confess to the ones that are close to us what problems we are having so that, you know, that we may be healed. Um, the first one we went through, humble ourselves and confess our sins. That's the first part of the path. The second part, we must pray sincerely. Um, we spend more time complaining than praying. Uh, we're talking about, we're not talking about thoughtless prayers, but we are talking about passionate and desperate prayers. Let's look at Hosea 7.14. They do not cry out to me with sincere hearts. Instead, they sit on the couches and wail, complaining loudly. Um, you might say uh, today that... Uh, you could read that, that uh, where do we spend an awful lot of our time? We spend an awful lot of our time doing this on Facebook and other social media events uh, more than we were with prayer. We're on this, in this mess because we are complaining, not praying. How much time have you spent on social media a day compared to your prayer time? I'm asking that to you, Christian. How much time are you spending in social media? And how much time are you spending praying? Read Colossians. I'd like to go through to Colossians 4.2. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Alert mind and a thankful heart. When you go to God in prayer, thanking him for the many things that he's done for you, and you have an alert mind to try to open yourself up to God and to talk to him. Uh, Ephesians 6.18, pray in the spirit at all times on, and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. To be more sincere in your prayers, be more specific in how you pray. Um, you know, it's uh, so many times, it's uh, so many Christians, it's like, okay, it's uh, nighttime or something, and uh, I'll, I'll give them my little two-minute deal before I go to bed. Or uh, the biggest thing is some kind of crisis arrives in, in life. And uh, what do we do? Oh, we pick, you know, we want to pray. We want to pray to God then. But during our daily life, when we're having issues that come along, then we should stop and just do a short prayer and let him know the desperation and the problems that you're having. He knows that anyway. Uh, number three, on the path, 
We must seek God intensely. God re- in Hebrews eleven six, God rewards those who earnestly seek Him. We're talking God. I, I believe somewhere. Uh, I don't remember the verse, but uh, God was God looks down, and He tries to find. Just one person, just one person that is sincerely trying to have a relationship with him. And that relationship is not one that is always about, I need this and I need that. And what can you do for me here? That's not, that is not seeking God intensely. That, in fact, is using God. What we should be doing is honestly and openly speaking to God himself, speaking about yourself and the problems and being thankful for the many things that he's done for you each day. Let's look at Deuteronomy 4.29. If you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul when you're in distress and all things have happened to you, you'll return to the Lord your God and obey him. For he is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you. As I've said before, we spend more time seeking everything else in the world in our life than seeking God. Let's look at Matthew 6, 33. First, seek the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. As you spend time in the word and prayer, focus on getting to know God and make knowing him your highest passion. Practice reading the Bible in the morning and at night before you sleep. Make, I, my suggestion is, is make it a point when you wake up, reach over, and pick up your your phone, which which most cases has a Bible app on it, before you pick up and start reading your social media. Start your day, find you, open up a, a simple uh, the Bible app. Uh, if you have uh, if you have a a Bible app that that was on my phone when I got it. Uh, just as a side note, uh, most of you all, you look at an app like that and you say, well, I wonder who, uh, some guy must have been a, a bright Christian that uh, that caused this, put together this Bible app in so many different languages and versions and dialects and things like that, it has things for prayer. Well, that's exactly not the fact. The... Uh, the fellow that developed that is uh, now the uh, leader of a mega church, but he was in college, and uh, he was a ringleader of a really bad fraternity at college that were getting in trouble, and they were trying to find a way out. And that gentleman happened to be walking across the campus one day, and somebody was there and handed him a testament. The problem was he didn't have a Bible for the Bible study. And he thought if there is a God, then he just used that man. And he picked it up and he read Ephesians for grace. Or, you know, it's, uh, that was the change, the transformation that was made in that life that today all you have to do is pick up the Bible app and open it up. Open it up in the morning. Start it out in the morning and end your day in the evening by going to the Bible app or going to your Bible. I mean, the, the point of it is is to, is to set things up in such a way that you're giving God in the morning and the evening an important part of your life. Um, make knowing him, this is, a, this is a really hard thing with the society that we live in. We need to remember to make him God 
our number one priority in life because it's from him where we have every blessing. Um, the fourth part of this path is we must turn back to God completely. Um, not half-heartedly, but completely. Uh, the problem sometimes is, is we don't, we don't see our own wicked ways or we're not ready to recognize them. Oh, well, you know, I'll just keep that over here in a little side here and nobody, nobody will know about that except me. As I've said before, yeah, there is somebody else that knows about that and he's the creator of the universe. Um, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 through 5, people will, will be self-absorbed, loving only themselves. They will be greedy for money. They will be boastful and arrogant, insulting to God, rude and disrespectful, even to parents. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unkind and unforgiving. They will enjoy slandering others. There will be no self-control. They will love violence and be cruel. They will be cynical, despising anyone and anything that is good. They will betray those loyal to them. They will be reckless and rash. They will be inflated and self-conceit. They will love pleasure more than God. Think about that, pleasure. They'll claim to be spiritual, but will reject true power that could make them godly. Um, my question to you is today, uh, does that kind of look like our society and this world that we live in today? It certainly uh, seems to me that that's the kind of world that we live in. Um, it's like the society, I think, that, as I've said before, that we live in today. And um, there's only one solution. It's not a political solution. It's not a social solution. It's not an educational solution. It's not a, gov a governmental solution. The only solution is repentance and Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Change, as I've said before, has to start with us, the family of God, because we are the ones that other people look to and see how it is that we actually live. We've gone through now the four things, humbly confess your sins, pray, Seek God intensely, turn from your wicked ways, and now we come to the promise that God gave Solomon. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their lands. And what I say today is that this all starts by each person individually. And it starts then within a church and the body of believers in that church. And those bodies of believers that are throughout the world, then when they live this way, then they can expect the promise that God will heal the nations that we live in today. It, I think this is... Uh, this is often overlooked because I think what generally happens is we think that some leader or some group or some government or somebody else is going to fix this problem for us. And the problem many times is the problem is inside ourselves and the things that we're not willing to confess and that we're not willing to pray and we're not willing to seek him and we're not willing to turn from our wicked ways. That's the situation that, that I see today. Let us pray. 
our most kind, loving, and gracious Heavenly Father, the creator of all of this universe, we would ask today that you will empower the Holy Spirit to go into every Christian throughout this world's heart and have them show hum, let them humbly conf learn to humbly confess their sins. Learn, let them be encouraged, Lord, by the Holy Spirit to learn to pray and to pray correctly that we're just not asking for blessings, that we're sharing the problems that we have and the sins that have caused, in many cases, those problems. Have, him, have the Holy Spirit also endear within our hearts, Lord, a need to seek out our God, our Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, ask, let the Holy Spirit also show us and turn us from our wicked ways. We know we've read this path and promise that was given to Solomon 3,000 years ago it is just as effective today to believers, Christian believers on this earth. Now I ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, to this morning to whom we give praise, honor, and glory. Amen.